Thousands of routers are infected with malware, a court deems PC border seizure unreasonable, and hackers really like their caffeine fix. All that coming up now on ThreatWire. I'm Shannon Morse, and this is ThreatWire for May 13, 2015, your summary of what's threatening our security, privacy, and internet freedom. Hey, thank you to everyone who has supported the relaunch of the show. We couldn't be more proud of this awesome community. And of course, if you guys are new to ThreatWire on the Hack5 channel, this is the show that we did for a year on TechFeed, and now we brought it back. So let's go ahead and get started. Whenever you get a new router for your house or your office, do you change the default username and password? Not the Wi-Fi password, but the password to change settings and things like that on your router. No? Do you know if your router has enabled remote administration, meaning that you can change settings even if you aren't on the same local network? Eh, yeah. That's a problem with a lot of consumer routers. They sport usability over security. A DDoS protection firm called Encapsula has been researching a series of denial of service attacks, commonly referred to as DDoS attacks. Since December, they've recorded over 40,000 IP addresses from 1,600 ISPs where attacks are coming in from. The attacks are being used to overwhelm websites with so much traffic that they become DDoSed, or the website basically just goes kaput for a while. The routers are infected with several different types of malware, and the compromised router could also be used to snoop on data transmitted or get access to other info on the network, such as network security cameras. That's a little scary, because an intruder could simply use a shell script to search for an open SSH port on a router and attempt to log in with the default credentials, and then boom, they have access. So how do I, as a small business owner, protect my network router from intrusion? First off, make sure that your username and password are not set as the defaults. Second, scan for commonly used ports to make sure that they aren't open with a tool like the one from YouGetSignal.com down in the show notes. You would want to scan for ports 22, 23, 80, and 443. And lastly, make sure that your firmware on your router is up to date. Hey, do you remember how if you travel across US borders, your computer and phone can be searched and seized for pretty much any reason? The Fourth Amendment protects us from that kind of thing, but at the border, that protection doesn't really exist. Luckily, a federal judge for the U.S. District Court of D.C. named Amy Berman Jackson disagrees. After a Korean businessman's computer was seized and then duplicated and searched, her court granted a suppression of the data, saying that there was a lack of reasonable suspicion of ongoing or imminent criminal activity, and it was invasive to the man's privacy. This is the third time a case has ended with this kind of outcome, and it is a good thing, too. Hopefully this will stir a new precedent that seizing laptops or other devices is a huge invasion of privacy and can disrupt a person's life, given that it takes weeks for a device to be returned after an investigation. And lastly, in the head-to-desk part of the internet, apparently hackers are stealing money from folks who are using the Starbucks mobile app with auto-reload on their linked credit cards. This is how it works. When you sign up with your Starbucks loyalty card, you can download the mobile app and then you can pay with it. The app requires that you sign on to your Starbucks account to set it up, and then when you want to go buy a coffee, or my favorite, a frappuccino, you can just scan your mobile app barcode at the register. If you have auto-reload turned on, you can automatically send money from your linked credit card to your loyalty card whenever your balance goes low, so then you can still get those gold stars. Hackers were able to log into a user's account, run the balance so low on the loyalty card that the linked credit card would just keep getting charged. And then they could change the email address on the account and send themselves a new gift card to either use or sell on a black market. So principally, this goes to show as a huge reminder that if your username and your password for your Starbucks account, or for any account for that matter, is really easy to guess, you might want to change those. There is no fraud detection set up for auto-reload within the app. Luckily, Starbucks is covering a lot of those issues. You may want to turn off auto-reload as well, or just unlink your credit card. I seriously feel like hackers really like caffeine, don't they? I wanted to take a moment and remind everyone watching the show that we value your input and your story ideas. So if you have something to say about any of the stories that we are reporting on, or you just want to throw out a link to something we might have missed, hit us up on our page over at youtube.com slash HAK5 in the comment section of this episode, and we may feature your comment on our next threat wire. And before I go, I want to give a huge thanks to everyone who has supported the show so far over on Patreon. If you can find value from the show and you can spare a few cents an episode, 
episode or even just a month, please consider becoming a patron over at patreon.com slash threatwire. And we maybe even feature your adorable fur babies like these ones on our next episode because they are all so friggin' adorable. I just want to hug all of them. <laughs> Our plan is to do this show three times a week as a milestone goal with a rotation of Patrick Norton, Darren Kitchen, and myself. So throughout the month of May, we'll be giving you a taste of what's to come. I hope you'll contribute to help keep this show completely independent and ad-free. And if you can't donate, a like, a share, even a subscribe goes a really long way too. And you can find all of our episodes, links to our social networks, and other ways to contribute over at threatwire.net. And with that, I'm Shannon Morse. I'll see you on the internet.